coming up for you? Um, I have, in the fall, I have uh, two books coming out. Pretty Dead, which is a vampire book. Um, kind of a little interesting, different take on it, I hope, from so many that we see now. But anyway, and then uh, the other book is, um, it started out as a joke. It's called Wood Nymph Seek Centaur. I may have to change that title. <laughs> Uh, mythological dating guide and uh, that takes uh, it classifies people according to 12 male and 12 female mythological types and what they are and how they pair up and uh, it's kind of like Linda Goodman's uh, love signs a little bit for the for this time that we're in so <laughs> and then I have a children's book um, which is going to be illustrated by Barbara McClintock, which is really beautiful. She did beautiful illustrations for that, which um, I don't know when that comes out, but that's forthcoming also. And I'm working on a werewolf book at the moment, so that's what's going on. Anybody? I have a question. How long did it take you to write Waters in the Wild? And you know, I, I never really, I think I estimate about six months total for the books these wow. days, I guess. You know, I mean, I, they're short, this is short, but um, I'm just kind of constantly working and I don't really know when they do get written, but somehow, luckily, <laughs> so. Anybody else? What do you get from working with these? My wonderful students? No, I, I know one of them, so. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, what, what do you get from working with I get so much. I started doing this uh, September of last year. Dear, is that January. no? I'm sorry, January of last. Oh, well, the critique group September. Yeah, yeah, January. Right. So I started doing um, a workshop at my house. Uh, I advertised it on MySpace and um, mostly, and about ten women. And it was just kind of an experiment to see how it would go. And I do exercises in class, and they turned into these wonderful experiences. They weren't just workshops. They were we would bring food and we'd really start bonding and every if someone didn't cry it would be like something's wrong you know everyone someone would always cry and it was very powerful and we got a lot of really I saw the writing just blossom it was beautiful so from that I was just really inspired by it and um, I, the main thing I got too is a feeling of community because I do my little writing in my house by myself so much of the time and I really uh, love the feeling of being connected to other writers and uh, to nurture them, but also they're very nurturing to me. You know? And and then this group that you heard today, they're part of my critique group, which is a smaller group that meets um, also once a month. And um, now we have Laura, too, and Liz, who's not here. And, um, we've been doing working on their longer projects, and that's really exciting because I get to see not just what they're doing in the in class with these little exercises, but you know the feeling of a finished book coming out of it, which is very exciting to me. And so, and people in my life they show up in my work all the time, and I I just feel like these women are you know giving me so much in terms of uh, inspiration that way. So. Well, my question would be mainly about you know your vocabulary and the way that I mean, <laughs> do you speak like that? <laughs> I love, I just think, I talk to you. <laughs> like, I come from the valley, and I don't speak like that, really. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every week, I'm like, wait, I'm a grandma, I'm supposed to be reading these books, and I um, love her. You know, and, and the way, you know, you're, just the way your, your dialogue. Um, you know, it's funny, in We See Bad, I used to, we used to use those words. Uh, those words were, I didn't make up a lot of them, it was like words that my friends and I would use. Um, now I'm not that interesting anymore, but maybe I'll become more interesting <laughs> again. Um, I don't know, I just, I really like um, dialogue and playing with it and playing with words and making it, like a lot of my character names come from things I've seen written on walls or, you know, kind of strange places, so. Like haze. Oh yeah, I don't, it's a lot of subconscious, you know, I, I don't really, uh, and then I'll look back and go, oh, that actually works, but I, I kind of try to keep that channel open, especially with names, and um, it's really a fun game to, to come up with crazy names, so. <laughs> but yeah, you can just look around and, like, well, a bookstore's not the best place to do that, <laughs> but you know what I mean.
like I think I've told this story a million times, but my secret agent lover man was from written in the grout and between the tiles at UC Berkeley in the bathroom. It said, my secret agent lover man, you will never read this. And I just love that. And I was like, oh, that's my character's name. So, so you can find it in the weirdest places. You can find it. Yeah. So, was there a question over here? Yeah. I was wondering with the story, the changeling, you said you have a vampire book and a werewolf book. So do you see all these as part of, sort of the same fantasy world, um, or are you starting new with every? Well, the, the vampire book and the werewolf book are very related. Um, and those two, my idea is that those characters will meet up eventually in another book that I have an idea for. And they're kind of like two, two pieces of the same thing in some ways. They're both first person uh, narrator from the feminine and the idea of the monster and how that uh, adolescence and, femi and the feminine experience and the metaphor of the monster and how to tame these wild feelings and this passion and this power. So those books are very related. This one's a little different, but all of the books, I like the combination of real things that have happened to me or happened to people I know and um, mixed with number of fantasy elements and I've just the fairies and the monsters and all these characters mythological c creatures that have been part of my experience since I was a really little girl so I'm what I'm finding now is I'm allowing them I'm allowing myself to write about the things I really dig like you know I think I've always done that to an extent but and I tell my students to do that like the thing that really turns you on is the thing that you write about even if you think no one else is gonna like this and I'm, I'm, as I get older, I'm just going more into what I really like and not being afraid that it, how it appears, so. But luckily, the culture is right now really into all this stuff, too, so. I think that's hungry for it, because we've been sort of starved in this country, I think, so. How much of your like, work, past work, and current is um, derived from your own life? A lot of it. Um, I mean, some less now, just because I've used up the stories, so, you know, to a point. Um, and I look outside myself. Like the vampire book is based on some acquaintances that I knew and something a real tragic incident, and that uh, I started looking into their lives and using that. And it's really not my life at all. But many of the books are very autobiographical. So if you're if you're in my life, I hope you you know you have to be a little bit of an exhibitionist or not or be okay with it. That's <laughs> gonna. <laughs> Should we sign now? Yeah? Okay. Once again, thank you, Justin.